All right, we got a short barn update for you today. Uh, I mentioned in a video about a week ago that I installed a wireless thermostat in the barn. Uh, this thing has been absolutely clutch because I can wake up in the morning and turn my phone on, pull open the app, and basically turn the heater on before I even come out here, right? So. We're gonna talk a little bit about what that heater is or what that thermostat is in terms of how it works and kind of what you would wanna look for if your uh, garage, barn, whatever you got is not in a central location and you wanna warm that thing up before you're gonna walk out and start your workout. All right, so the thermostat that I went with is called MISA, M-Y-S-A. Uh, found it online and I needed a specific thermostat. I couldn't get something like a Nest thermostat or any of the other popular ones that are typical, typically set up for the house. And part of that is because I have 120 volts wired up to the barn. I don't have uh, normal 12 volts uh, that most thermostats are gonna run on. Now I could have gotten like a transformer. Um, I actually tried it at one point where you can change the voltage around and you're able to run a normal thermostat off of that, but they're the Nest thermostats and typical thermostats aren't set up for these type of configurations, or at least the one that I had, right? So, and especially for the heater that I had to run, required a little bit more voltage. So there would have been a whole lot of extra wiring going on. We can already see that I've got enough spaghetti wires just kind of hanging out here. So I went with a uh, wireless um, 120 volt thermostat in order to make the connection between the box and the heater. So in terms of temperature, uh, when it's about 20 to 30 degrees out here, I'm usually getting a bump of about 20 degrees. So when it's between 20 to 25, I've noticed I can get it up to right around 40 to 45 degrees potentially. And then when it's right around freezing, I can get it up to right around 50 degrees. So one other thing that I had to do was extend the Wi-Fi out here. When I first hooked it up, I actually couldn't turn it on because I couldn't make the connection because the Wi-Fi didn't throw from my house out to the barn. So that's also something that you'll have to consider if you want it to truly be wireless. This thing has to have an internet connection at all times so that you can turn, turn it on from your phone. So I had to add another uh, link system node basically in my garage that put me about another 30 to 40 feet closer to the barn in order to extend the Wi-Fi range out here. It's still not great, but it is enough to keep this thing hooked up to the internet so that I can turn it on from my house. Um, so once I got all this stuff hooked up, obviously from the box to the thermostat and then the thermostat has to send the signal up to the heater to turn it on. Um, I was able to get this thing fired up obviously when I woke up in the morning and didn't have to come out and turn on the gas or turn on anything like that. Now, the thing that I have noticed because there's been a couple days where it's been around 20 to 25 degrees in here in the morning is that um, even though this heater will be running for about an hour uh, before I come out to really push some good heat uh, to really feel the radiant heat kind of come down from the tube. I hung it at 15 feet with the idea that at 15 feet it's going to spread heat over a 30 foot floor which is about the distance across the floor that I have right so it does push that heat out but when it's way down in the 20s and it's probably going to get a little bit colder um, you can't feel that heat all the way over at the edges anymore you can only really feel it directly underneath so the only other thing that i might change with this is actually bring it down a little bit lower closer to the floor drop it another two or three feet so i can get a more centralized area right around the middle of the gym heat it up nice and where you can really feel the radiant heat coming down rather than uh, it losing kind of some of that heat power by dissipating across the distance of the floor. So the other thing I've been working on obviously is putting up the walls. Um, I've had to make a transition from basically working on the back wall that you kind of see behind me here uh, for one main reason. Um, I know in an earlier video I talked about how there's basically um, open space to the outside right up around the edge of where the roof meets the wall. Now this is good for uh, air circulation, air kind of moving around so it doesn't collect as much condensation in here or there's not as much condensation when you're heating things or anything like that. Now the downside of this is those vents are pretty big because it is an old school barn and what I've noticed when I come in here early in the morning is even if the heater's putting down some heat, if I stand close to that wall I can almost feel a column of cold air kind of coming down the wall. So if you're anywhere towards the edges you can definitely feel that cold air kind of circulating and coming in even though it's not not that much, right? Um, so I'm looking at potentially uh, sealing up a little bit more of those areas up there. So I kind of stopped working on this wall and moved over to another side wall 
um, that I want to build up and don't have to worry so much about the ventilation part. Now, the problem with this wall is that the boards don't fit completely across nice and neat like they do over here. I want to keep the main beams exposed that you can kind of see over on the side and on the side behind us here. I want to keep those exposed because I think it's going to look cool, but then we have to arrange the boards a little bit differently, kind of like you would a floor, right? You don't want all of the seams to line up in one spot. So if I just put all the boards across the wall, um, all the, the seam is going to all be in the same area. So you kind of have to shimmy things around like you would for shiplap. And that's taken some extra time and taken a whole bunch of extra cuts. All right, so the other thing about this wall is that nothing kind of fits square up to the edge. Um, obviously things are just a little bit off. I've always talked about that in here just because the barn's so old. So definitely had to add in some framing on the wall here in terms of where the studs go up to bring everything out so that it could actually match the edge on the big timber beams and match the edge on this wall over here. All right, that's it for the barn update today. If you guys got any questions, go ahead and put them down in the comments below about the thermostat or about throwing the wood wall up. I've got all my equipment on order, so I'm really stoked for all that stuff to come up here and I can show you guys how I plan on decking this place out and getting some more fitness in.